Hey, how you doing? Bob Volks here for the Gilly Glue. I'm going to fill some hummingbird feeders today and make up some of our plant-based sweetener nectar that we have. This is the jewel box. It has a built-in ant moat here and a great little feeder that flips right to the top. Let's head to the kitchen. Okay, we got the water good and hot. And the thing I like about these, this uh, little feeder, this is a hum blossom, they call this. This is all polycarbonate plastic, very, very durable, solid molded flowers. I talk about that quite a bit all the time. Um, nectar guards on the underside. So it's very easy to just pop it open with your thumbs, comes right apart. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff in there. A little, I think one's a mosquito and an ant maybe. And so I want to wash that underside really well and I want to wash this inside really well with some really good hot water. And uh, I got a little bit of a scrub brush here as well. And I like to give them a little, little scrub underneath the hot water. Uh, I don't really use a lot of soap. Sometimes we'll get into some soap. I don't like detergent in uh, in with the feeders and stuff. It just, I find it, I don't know. I, the, this polycarbonate plastic is very, very sturdy and stiff and, and what have you. And uh, I, I just don't like mixing the detergent with the, the with the plastic, particularly the soft plastics. Very poor quality plastics are very porous and soft, much softer than this. This is a this is a very hard, dense plastic, and and uh, it doesn't absorb odors the same way. But still, I don't like to uh, have them. So this is the the jewel box. This is a window feeder. It has a built-in ant moat that hangs on the window, and you can see there's all kinds of crud and stuff in the ant moat, which is not a problem. But there's still water in there, so we'll just get that down inside. Uh, and then this is completely empty as well. So, uh, the, and then what we were wanting to talk about in terms of the, the hummingbirds uh, at this time of year, particularly the males, and I've been noticing around the feeders the last few days, uh, it, the very characteristics of them. So they're, they're starting to stage for migration, as you like to call it. So I even like to think that they're, they're really starting to beef up in terms of getting some uh, good nutrients and, and getting ready for migration. Because over the next six, weeks or so uh, or eight weeks into you know usually by uh, Thanksgiving weekend they're all gone usually I mean sometimes there's lingering ones and stuff and they do stay later for sure but uh, but some they're mostly gone by the end of September that kind of thing so they're really getting getting ready to uh, to get get on with things but the males uh, become a little bit independent uh, at this time of year. They're finished with the nesting process. Uh, they're not so concerned about their mate and or their young. And um, they kind of get on with things and they become a, a very independent and sort of take on a role that you're not used to seeing in the, um, in the spring. And that, the other thing is that they're on the move a little bit more. So they're here, there, and everywhere uh, going to, to feeders. And then they start to protect the feeder, whereas most of this spring in, 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 the, in, in, in July, it's the females that you see at the feeders all the time. Uh, so it changes up a little bit when we get into this time of year. So it's kind of an interesting thing that it comes into that. So we've got stuff kind of ready here. We've got the feeders washed up. So I have my uh, four cup measuring cup. Um, I have the kettle. I got it all cooked up and ready to go. Uh, let it boil. I don't, it boils fine. That's okay. It can boil. Um, but I just let it sit. It's still good and hot. Then we got our package of uh, plant-based sweetener. It has no preservatives, no chemicals or anything in it. It actually has added vitamins and minerals for the hummingbirds so that they have a really good food value to go with it. So what I like to do so that I get my measurements correct is that with my four cup measuring cup, I like to get my water in it. So that I know my calibration is right. So I have my four cups there. There's the measuring line right there. And good hot water, it's all ready to go. And then I'll take my sweetener and just get it opened up here. Mixes up really well this, it actually is. No problem what to, to uh, blend in at all. And then we'll, uh, we'll just put in the sweetener. Sure, we get it all out there. 
midsummer sometimes I cut back a little bit. I'll add a little bit more water. They don't need quite so much when they're around the flowers and everything all the time. Um, but this then I, as it comes into the fall when they're staging for migration and stuff, I'll kind of uh, up the ante a little bit again to give them a much higher food value, much higher sweetness. So there we go. We've got it in there. You can see the, the nectar in the bottom and I'll just kind of stir it up. Get it nice and dissolved in there. You can see it going clear, clear, clear all the time. There, look at that, it's clearing right up. Dissolves very, very well in there. There we go. Now we'll leave that sit on the counter, uh, let it cool off a little bit, and then I'll uh, fill the feeders with uh, this remaining that I had in the fridge in my jar. Then I'll wash out my jar, and uh, after that cools a little bit, then we will go ahead and uh, put that in the jar for over the next while. So I'm going to fill these feeders. Uh, the other nice, interesting part, and I've done this on other videos as well as we've gone along, is that there's fill lines here so that you don't overfill your feeder. I was talking to a customer this morning actually that she was having uh, a little bit of an interesting situation with one of her feeders and stuff. And I think what was happening a little bit is that it was uh, expand so when these feeders are out in this heat particularly the high heat and high humidity that we've had here the nectar will expand and it forces itself out so that's why I like these feeders that have a fill line here and you can see that the nectar port the food port is here so we have about this much distance in between uh, where the nectar line is and where the food port is so it allows for a little bit of an expansion and you gotta remember hummingbirds have a big long beak and then their tongue is twice that long so they can actually lick the bottom of this feeder they, they put their beak down in there and just lick the bottom there just like a dog uh, the other nice feature is that these have the nectar guards I don't know if you can see it there but they do have nectar guards on the inside so that you if there's any movement or any splash or whatever that it keeps the nectar inside solid mold the flowers so there's no chance for the nectar to get underneath and attract ants and earwigs and hornets and all that kind of stuff uh, so I really like the these feeders for that so we're going to fill these up, we're going to get the ant moat with some water in it, and then we're going to get them back outside where they belong. Perfect. Clean up your feeders. Get things ready fall migrations getting started uh, hummingbirds are going to be really active we had three feeders going early when they arrived back in the spring uh, through sort of midsummer we went back down to two and then almost to one and now we're back up to two feeders full-time going going full-time so have yourself a great day get out fill the feeders have some fun in nature create some habitat of native plants and wild grasses and have some fun thanks for stopping by and watching. Appreciate it very much.